Coming up next on the news, Amtrak requests a $1.5 billion bailout from Congress as they prepare to cut their workforce by 20%. A very popular YouTuber commits suicide in his own home. And plus, we'll have a look at what's to come in the future of Choo Choo Ben Productions. We'll have all this and more, all next on the news. And now, from Studio A, here is your news anchor, Mr. Choo Choo Ben. Guys, this is going to be amazing. Brand new set, brand new animations, this is probably going to best... This is probably going to be the best news minute I've done yet. Anyways, I'm Choo Choo Ben, and welcome to the new Choo Choo Ben News Minute, bringing you the latest in railroading and world news. Now, I know I do this every time I do a news minute. I, I hate doing it, but we have to start off with some breaking news. This is breaking news! Has anyone ever watched the Talking Kitty Cat series on YouTube? Well, it's this really cool series made by a really cool guy named Steve Cash. His editing magic and his content are both top-notch. However, just a few months ago, the series was forced to come to an end. Here's why. According to People.com and local authorities, the Talking Kitty Cat YouTuber was found dead in his home in Idaho back on the 16th of April. The cause of death was a self-inflicted gunshot to the chest, and alcohol use was listed as probable in the coroner's report. Cash's wife Celia posted this to Facebook, saying, quote, I just lost my best friend, my sidekick, my lover, my mentor, my absolute everything this morning. I'm so sad to say my husband Steve Cash took his own life this morning, 4-16-20. The YouTube sensation began its channel back in 2007. The Talking Kitty Cat series was launched about a year later, featuring 69 different videos where he would make silly conversations with his pets. The first of these videos was uploaded in 2008. The latest was posted in December of 2019. All of these videos would round up approximately 770 million viewers and over 2.5 million subscribers. Not only would he make funny conversations with his animals, but he would also make really cool rap songs with them, which majorly contributed to Cash being a huge success on YouTube. He was also a musician after all. His wife Celia says, quote, Thank you to everyone who has shown our family the endless amounts of love. She also adds that her husband has changed her life, along with many other people's lives as well. Steve Cash was 40 at the time of his death. <laughs> If you or someone you know is thinking about suicide, please contact the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. Or you can text STRENGTH to the crisis text line at 741741 or go to www.suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Now, I'm pretty sure this is everyone's favorite part right here, when my hand puppets do the weather. John, take it away. Thank you, Choo Choo Ben. June 20th is when summer finally arrives. I bet everyone is really enjoying the days where we have not had rain because it has rained a lot in the east. So we're going to look at our current conditions. So let's go to the weather station. All right, so today is Tuesday, June 2nd, 2020. I don't know why that says Monday 6-1. That's a day off. Anyway, currently 12.04 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, very clear skies at UVI Index. It is very high at an 8, so uh, we're going to need them sunglasses and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, good sunscreen. Light is currently at 849 WM2. Indoor temperature for the studio, 70 uh, degrees, 37% humidity. Um, outside, 66 degrees, 38% humidity. Wind gusts are at 3.5 miles an hour, and we have had no rain. So, um... With that being said, we are going to turn it straight back over to Choo Choo Ben, who has the rest of the week for us. Ben? Thank you, John. And as you can see, I have moved over to the other end of the desk so we can put the weather up on the screen over there. Looking good. Alright, so now let's look at the rest of the week. So starting with tonight, we will be having some really clear skies with a low of 55. Not much to be seen. Uh, tomorrow it will be clear during the daytime. A couple clouds here and there. Uh, at night, we'll have a high of 70 and a low of 57. 
Thursday, um, it'll be partly cloudy, it'll be raining overnight, most likely into Friday morning we'll have a high of 70 and a low of 57, just like Wednesday. Um, Friday, uh, we will have some rain in the morning, like I said, possibly, I think there's 40% chance of it. We will have a high of 73 and a low of 59. Now, Saturday is a doozy. Uh, it's going to be mostly cloudy during the daytime, and then at night we're going to have a 60% chance of thunderstorms. Highs will be 73, and then lows will dip down into 59. So with that being said, that was your weather report for this week. Now let's have another puppet show with our traffic puppet, Dean Bossick. Dean. Thank you, Ben. How about we check out our new security system? I heard we got one for the studio, and so far it has worked really well. So this is Cam 1 here at the front door of our studio. Seems to be pretty inactive, except for a few cars every so often. Uh, let's look at over here, Cam 2, facing the driveway. Uh, not really active here, either. Now, here is Cam 3, facing the backyard of our studio. It's a really wooded area, a perfect home for all kinds of nature. Nothing much to be seen back here, otherwise. We have seen a few raccoons here and there. Um, ben, we'll have to get back to you on that. Anyways, let's go to our new INREX system for a look at our highways. We're going to be using this system from now on. Really cool system. Um, all of our roads are looking clear. Uh, one closure that really caught my eye when I first got on this um, is down here in Independence. Um, this is some road construction on I-77, both ways from exits 155, I-480, exits 20A and B to exit 153 at Pleasant Valley Road. This construction will end tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Not sure of an exact time that it's going to end, but I know it's going to end tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow morning, so the commute can get back to normal. Anyways, with this being said, we're going to look at our traffic cams now. Here's I-271 at State Route 14. Looking a little bit congested, but I don't think it's that bad that it's going to be causing any kind of backups or delays of any kind. Uh, 271 at I-480 North uh, near Rockside Road. Exit ramp also looking pretty good. No accidents to be reported in any of these areas. Um, oh, okay, now my button's not working. I can't switch cameras. Oh, there we go. Here's I-480 at Transportation Boulevard near the Valley View Bridge. No accidents here, just a lot of construction. I think they're adding new lanes to this freeway. I don't know how long that's going to take, but it's, it's going to take a while. I can safely say that. They've been doing this project for a while now. So anyway, this is going to wrap up your traffic report for this edition of the News Minute. If you would like to see us do the weather and traffic for it, for your area, comment below your city and your state, and we will be sure to feature it in the next News Minute. Anyways, with that said, Ben, back to you. Thank you, Dean. have been spread among bunches of Florida Rail fans that Amtrak service between Miami and Orlando will be taken over. However, that most likely won't happen. Here's why. That's the sound of Florida's Brightline Railroad. Brightline is arguably one of the most deadliest railroads in the United States. It's a privately owned railroad that has quote-unquote bullet trains that can run up to 79 miles an hour between Miami and West Palm Beach. It's supposed to be a luxurious and safe railroad, however that's not the case. Considering that there has been over 40 railroad related deaths on Brightline territory alone since its inception two years ago, making it America's deadliest railroad. In addition, 250 employees have been laid off due to the ongoing coronavirus. The reason why Amtrak is most likely not getting taken over by this railroad is because as of May 25th, 2020, Indian River County, Florida took legal action to stop the construction of Brightline tracks to Orlando. The county agreed to use $200,000 to make one last appeal to its long-going lawsuit after a ruling in December 2019 upheld the decision to allow Brightline to continue the construction. Indian River framed the case by requesting the court to review their case about how Brightline is not eligible for $2.7 billion of tax-exempt private activity bonds. These bonds are being used in part to fund the construction of tracks to Orlando.
officials once said that the coronavirus is supposed to peak in May. Well, they were right on that note. The U.S. is about to hit a huge milestone of 100,000 COVID-19 related deaths. However, the thing is, the thing that is interesting about this pandemic is how unevenly it hit America. Some places are worse than others. Take New York, the epicenter of the pandemic. They got hit super hard. Then there's the other states that haven't really received a severe blow like New York. But no matter what, all of the same precautions are being taken all around to try to prevent the spread of COVID-19. But then there's the reopening of the businesses. Why are we trying to reopen businesses when things have peaked and they're at their worst? I don't get... I. I mean, yeah, it's at its worst right now, and I'm afraid it might get even worse before it finally simmers down. I just can't really ha wrap my head around that. Anyways, let's look at some businesses that we have reopened despite the virus and its peaking. Despite these places being opened, that doesn't mean we stop taking precautions. We still have to practice social distancing. Anyways, coming up after the break, Amtrak requests a $1.5 billion bailout as they prepare to cut their workforce by 20%. Also, we'll be taking a look at what's coming to Choo Choo Bend in the future. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back after the break. Big Dad? Howdy, usual. Move some new cars. All a bunch of steel. Get the supermarket shelves stocked. Made sure everyone got their latest gadgets. What's up for the next shift? Uh, nothing much. Just keep their lights on. Thanks. <laughs> Doing the big things that move an economy. See you tomorrow, man. See you tomorrow, sir. Just another day at Norfolk Southern. My dad can stop a train with his finger. Wow. My mom can see into the future. My mom has propeller hands. My dad has like 200 eyes like a spider. My mom. She speaks train. What? what? Wow. Hey, kiddo, you ready to see the dispatch center? Can you really speak the trains? You betcha. Your mom is so cool. At Norfolk Southern, we're harnessing the power of technology to redefine the world of transportation. That's how you reimagine possible. Well, as you know, we've been on a two and a half week hiatus from YouTube due to schoolwork for me. Boo. However, in my spare time, I was able to plan for many good things to come to the, for this YouTube channel. So, let's start with some new series. I have three new series that I would like to start. One of them being The Droid Show, still coming Saturday, June 13th, 2020 at noon EST. I will also be doing a gaming series and a reaction series on top of that. The gaming series will be called Raging with Ben, because, you know, gaming can cause rage quits and stuff. Uh, anyway, so that's going to be called Raging with Ben, and the reaction series is just going to be called Ben Reacts. Uh, now, I do not have a clue when these two series are going to be coming out, but I will let you know when I find a date. Also, I have started to narrate all of my train videos professionally using the voiceover option in InShot. Um, yeah, I really hope you enjoy those. those are, I take a lot of time on those. And one more thing, live streaming. I've been doing live streams on Instagram a lot lately, so you can hit me up at Chuchuben Productions on Instagram and watch my live. Also, live streaming on YouTube will hopefully return on Saturday, June 6, 2020, at the normal time of 10 a.m. Eastern. So yeah, lots of good stuff. Amtrak is requesting a $1.5 billion bailout from Congress as they prepare to cut their workforce by about 20%. Congress already gave them, however, $1 billion in emergency funding. CEO Bill Flynn tells a source, quote, This reduction is necessary to ensure we have a sustainable Amtrak that can continue to make critical investments in our core and long-term growth strategies, while also keeping safety as our top priority. Amtrak also says that without the additional bailout, they have to temporarily suspend some long-distance train travel, and that other schedules would be thinned down. Amtrak's high-speed service could be greatly reduced as well.
speaking of high speed, tests have been carried out in Pueblo, Colorado with the new Alston built Acela train. Take a look at this. Amtrak's new next generation Acela Express has achieved a top speed of 168 miles per hour, which is actually faster than what Amtrak had hoped. This train will continue to be tested for about six more months till its start of revenue service on the Northeast Corridor in 2021. A Burton, Ohio couple sustained serious injuries after their car hit a loose horse and then head on with another vehicle on May 24th. Dave and Lynette Mullet were flown to Metro Health Medical Center in Cleveland after the crash on Tavern Road, Route 168 near Georgia Road. They were not intoxicated or anything and they were wearing seatbelts at the time, but the horse was fatally killed. The driver of the other car, 42-year-old Sarah Sustin, was not injured in the crash. Fire departments from Burton, Middlefield, Newberry, Troy, and Parkman, and two life flights responded to the crash. I hope country singer Gabby Barrett got a sweet surprise from her idol Trisha Yearwood on CMT's Hot 20 Countdown with Cody Allen. Her reaction was indeed priceless as she watched Yearwood virtually congratulate her on her number one debut single, I Hope. The single made it to the top of the Billboard Country Airplay chart and the Media Base chart in late April. It also made it to the top of the CMT Hot 20 countdown. Barrett joined a short list consisting of Carrie Underwood, Carly Pierce, and Kelsey Ballerini with this achievement. Well, that is going to do it for this edition of the News Minute. I hope you all really liked it, especially with the new set and all the, all the cool stuff. Um, from everyone here at Choo Choo Ben Productions, thank you so much for watching the channel over the past six years. We really appreciate you guys as subscribers. Be sure to come back here a little later at 12.30 p.m. EST to watch another episode of Rail Fanning and Hudson, and then again at 1 p.m. EST for a full-on tour of our new security system. With that said, I'm out. Peace. This is Bad Droid speaking for the Choo Choo Ben News Minute, a Choo Choo Ben production. Stay tuned for Real Benning and Hudson, premiering at 12.30 p.m. Eastern only on Choo Choo Ben Productions. This program has been edited for broadcast. Stay tuned for Rail Fanning in Hudson, Episode 6, premiering in 10 minutes at 12.30 p.m. Eastern, only on Choo Choo Ben Productions.